Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here, and today I'm going to be benchmarking a solid state drive. And so a friend of mine picked up the Samsung A30 series uh, solid state, and they asked me to install it for them. So I installed it, reinstalled a clean install of Windows 7 64-bit professional here, and I've downloaded this program, this uh, free benchmark, AS SSD benchmark program. It's free, and uh, it's very easy to use. The link will be in the description to download this program. So basically, you just double click on it and uh, you choose the solid state drive here that you have installed and you go ahead and click on start. And so, this particular solid state drive is very reliable, good performing uh, solid state drive. But I'm going to talk a little bit about some other ones. Um, for those of you who are thinking about uh, upgrading to a solid state drive now that they are somewhat reasonable, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, in terms of price, but uh, I kind of want to help you choose um, the right one. Also, I wanted to show you uh, where to plug in the solid state drive and what kind of uh, motherboard um, and the different speeds that you have, so just so that you don't bottleneck anything, right? And so while this is running, I'll talk a little bit about the read and write speeds. If you notice here, the read speeds, the very fast 500 megabytes, that's kind of the, you know, what the high end um, speeds are hitting now uh, with the solid states and the write speeds is about 390 it's a little bit less but to me not so much important the write speeds because if you think about it when you do something like install a game uh, you're going to be writing to the hard drive if you're using a disc the optical drive the dvd drive is not going to write to your solid state drive at 390 me megabytes per second the only time this would probably be utilized is if you had multiple things writing to your hard drive, maybe downloading something from the internet, uh, transferring a file from one hard drive to your solid state drive, um, and just multiple hard drives to your solid state drive. Yeah, that's where write speeds would, you know, you would notice uh, a speed uh, increase um, with that type of uh, application, but in terms of uh, installing a program, not really going to be noticeably different. Um, for the read speeds though, that's where you're going to kind of notice things because that's when programs load up, like your operating system loads up, your game loads up, and uh, having a higher uh, read speed is really good because that's the thing that you'll kind of notice and that's the convenience of the solid state drive that you're going to really notice, right? So uh, this test is done, took about a minute, it's very quick. You can take a screenshot of your test results here. Uh, which is really convenient for archival purposes and then you can also export it as an XML file and uh, you can read the IOPS here right of your of your drive and uh, that's pretty much it for this drive very simple very easy to use program now in terms of connections right this particular drive is the latest SATA 3 6 gigabit per second drive and this is what allows you to have these ridiculously fast 500 megabytes per second transfer speeds being on the SATA 3 connection right prior to this was SATA 2 now if your motherboard has only SATA 2 I don't recommend that you get a SATA 3 um, solid state drive unless you're gonna plan on very soon upgrade your motherboard to a SATA 3 connection or a motherboard that is capable of SATA 3. For those of you who have a very uh, a much older system, um, maybe more than two years old, uh, or you just don't have a SATA 3 connection on your motherboard, I recommend that you get a solid state drive. If you can find one, probably used one or you know clearanced or something like that um, of a SATA 2 connection, um, then go ahead and get that. It'll be a much cheaper option for you because you're not really going to utilize the SATA 3 connection in your SATA 2 motherboard, right? So that's something to consider. And so I wanted to bring up here some examples um, of this SATA 2 connection hard drive here that I found on Amazon, uh, the OCZ Vertex 2, right? So this is a SATA 3 gigabits right here. Uh, I'm sorry, SATA 2 3 gigabits connection. And you can find one here for about 120 bucks. This is US. Um, prices here and uh, 120 bucks for 240 gigs which is not bad it's pretty decent it is a used um, solid-state drive 
And so another thing to consider uh, in terms of the OCZ brand, and I'm not sure if other brands do this, like Crucial or Kingston, um, I think they do have like a, a two types of speeds or two types of um, SKUs of solid state drives because uh, one is the high performance expensive uh, like this OCZ Vertex 4. The Vertex is the brand that's their highest, fastest, most advanced hard drive which typically will cost more, right? Um, Kingston, I think they have one that's like the Extreme and then the SSD now or something like that. Um, but this is something, another thing that you want to consider. For example, the OCZ, they have a series called the Agility uh, line of SSDs. And this is typically a little bit more budget friendly. If you look here, here is the 256 gigs, 180 bucks versus the Vertex, which is a little bit more expensive, $205, right? And for the most part, me typically with 400 megabytes uh, read speeds, and about 400 megabytes write speeds. This is good enough for me, uh, for my budget. And so this is what I'll typically typically get is a agility series. But for those of you, you might find a really good deal, um, and you might have high-end applications, or you're writing multiple devices to your solid-state drive, and you need to have this really fast speeds. They're both SATA six. Um, or SATA 3 6 gigabit uh, SSDs so that's something to uh, keep it uh, to consider and to know about and also um, here's the Samsung uh, 830 series that's in this particular system right here and um, it's a very good drive and for me personally I had actually I like getting the used stuff uh, especially when it comes to solid state drive you'll kind of know after running this test, you're gonna kind of know that it's gonna run fine. Um, I haven't really read about a hard drive like degrading or a solid state drive um, just degrading over time. I guess um, it either is gonna work very fast and then not work anymore. Um, so you have there is a return policy. I, I think it's like 30 days, but I think within that 30 days, you'll kind of know um, if it's a good drive or not. And uh, I've had some good luck with the used stuff here. And so you can get this drive for about 180 bucks, which is a great deal, especially for the latest and greatest. Um, and the Samsung 830 series has been known to be very reliable drives, right? And uh, of course you wanna do more reviews than just what I'm telling you. Um, so that's some things to consider here. Now I'm gonna be showing you what you gotta plug your um, new solid state drive in with. And also, one more thing to consider is having the proper cables. Uh, this particular motherboard came with SATA 3 6 gigabit uh, cables, and um, so I didn't really have to get new cables, but if you don't have, if you have older cables, older SATA cables, or you've got those red cables, that's very you know typical of seeing, and it doesn't have any indication on there as to what um, it is, if it's a SATA 2 or if it's a SATA 3 cable, uh, I recommend that you pick up a cable um, that says SATA 3 on it, right? And this is a 6 gigabit because you don't want a bottleneck. You don't want to have your brand new uh, SATA 3 6 gigabit and then plug a SATA 2 cable in there and then you're going to run a benchmark and you're going to get uh, SATA 2 speeds, right? You spend all this money on the SATA 3, you might as well get SATA 3 speeds. All right, so uh, that's just one last thing I wanted to tell you. Now I'm going to show you the plugging in to the proper port on this particular motherboard. All right, so here I am on the motherboard, this Gigabyte motherboard, and this is the uh, Z68 UD3H B3 motherboard. And so this white SATA port right here is the SATA 3 6 gigabit connection. And if you notice there, right underneath there, it says SATA 3 dash zero and then SATA 3 dash one that just means port number zero port number one and these uh, black ports right here are the SATA 2 as it shows right there SATA 2 uh, dash 2 SATA 2 dash 3 that means that's port number two number three 
and then here's a SATA 2 of uh, port number 4 another SATA port right here and so you uh, want to typically put your hard drives here if you I have both hard drives the traditional spinning hard drive uh, it's a one terabyte Western Digital Black I don't remember if that's actually a SATA 2 or a SATA 3 it's probably a SATA 2 most rotational drives are SATA 2 connections um, uh, and that's pretty much the fast that they're ever going to be I guess but I put them both on the SATA 3 connection I mean it's it's backwards compatible or whatever it doesn't it doesn't really matter what you plug it into I mean you can even plug in your solid state drive into the SATA 2 connection of course you're going to be bottlenecking yourself there but um, anyways if you get another solid state drive I recommend you put the spinning hard drive into the SATA 2 port and uh, use both SSDs in your SATA 3 and so um, that's pretty much it for the Intel side and the on the AMD side for those of you who have AMDs uh, there's the 990 series chipsets all the ports are SATA 3 6 gigabits which is you know a really good plus um, the 980 all of them should be um, SATA 3 I'm not sure and the 970 you're gonna have to look those up for those of you who have those drives and uh, so yeah that's pretty much it for this uh, explanation uh, somewhat uh, informative uh, video on solid state drives hope you uh, enjoyed and uh, thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later